Uh, Mike Tirico was there in Boston last night as the Blues beat the Bruins, and he joins us now. Uh, what was that atmosphere like in Boston last night, Mike? Uh, it was stunned. Uh, I really thought they just assumed that, and how could you blame them? Because every time a Boston team shows up in a championship, they win, winning game six on the road. St. Louis, without game seven experience, comes to Boston. They all thought, the fans in the area, that Boston was just going to win, and it would be a party until 1 or 2 a.m. Uh, St. Louis, I think, learned a lot from the game six they played and brought what they were missing to game seven and were physical and controlled the game and good for them and good for the city too. But also I'm curious, and so were the Danettes, when you're there pregame and Doc Emmerich throws it to you, can yeah. you can you hear anything, you know, like yeah. your your yeah. your producer is giving you a cue? I mean, it was so loud there. Well, what's that feeling like? And in St. Louis, the, the couple of games before, it, it is really loud. You know, the, the best thing, actually, the best career purchase that I've, I've uh, made here, the same earpieces that the rock, the rock and roll guys wear <laughs> up on stage, like you put those double ears in and you can not hear anything but what's going out over the air, which is great. Now, you look really cool. Like, you'll see Jagger or you'll see a, a musician <laughs> go, hey, I have those, you know, I have those. I can't, you can't sing like that or play like that, but uh, – but, that's that's what I love about hockey, and you, you've known it. You've known it when uh, you've done this or been to games. The electricity in a building is just a little different. There's just a little bit of a different edge because of the physicality and the speed of the game and, and the passion of hockey fans. It, it was fun to uh, be in the building. I've never seen the cup skated, and afterwards I was done with my responsibilities. I went out and watched the Blues for 15 minutes just as a fan. It's just really fun to see that happen. And also, it's one of the great traditions. It's one of the more awkward ones, but it's it's a great tradition in sports where the Bruins are they're just waiting. They got to wait for the Blues to go down the line. There, shaking hands, good game, good game, good game. And I couldn't help but focus on Brad Marchand and just going, "Oh my gosh!" The internet was having a field day with him because the camera was staying on him, and he was he had tears in his eyes. And he's an all-time pest, you know. So, yeah. like, those, those those are the guys that you love when they're on your team. You hate when they're on the other team. And if you're on the other team, you you love seeing a guy like that be miserable. But he's pretty cool. He went from a total pest to a hundred-point guy this year in the league, and uh, it, it was a good series. You know what, Dan? I think it's been good for hockey the last couple of years. Think about this: Vegas, no fan base, gets to the final. Washington finally gets a cup. St. Louis wins a cup. Those are generations yeah. of fans in three markets that'll be into hockey here going forward so I, I think it was actually a pretty pretty good last couple of years of the sport even with the rangers chicago philadelphia the kings the blackhawks not making the playoffs somehow it still ended up being a pretty positive year and you look at this team in january interim head coach you got a fourth or fifth string goaltender that right. you brought up from the ahl like you you can't script this stuff not, not for a second, and and that is the cool thing because I, you know, we, we did a lot of nights at Sports Center where you know, okay, sixteen teams are going to make the playoffs out of twenty-one, or then twenty-three in the NHL. How meaningful is the regular season? Well, now look at these guys. In January, they were dead last, and there in April they made the playoffs. So getting in the tournament is not easy, and now getting in the tournament means you got a chance to advance here. So to go from worst team just after New Year's to champion just before Father's Day is pretty sick and gives everybody in all these cities hope, even if you get off to a poor start during your season. He's Mike Tirico from NBC Sports, joining us from Boston. I was watching the Golf Channel last night, and they were recapping 2000 with Tiger U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. Still the most impressive, I think, weekend or week of golf that we've had in, in the history mm -hmm. of golf. And he probably had the second most historical week, and that was at Augusta when he won by 12. But... You were on the call the first two rounds with Tiger. What do you remember about that? Yeah, the, the Thursday, Friday was on ESPN at that point. And I was doing the ABC golf. We were able to work with the NBC guys on the cable coverage. What, what I remember, honestly, was we had these really long fog delays. You know, the marine layer mm -hmm. rolls in. And Tiger was in such cruise control and commanding everything. And you kept thinking, well, is his momentum going to be stopped because of the fog delay? Is he going to you know, not find what he had in the first stretch here when he goes back out? And he just got even better and better and better. He had such control of all of his clubs because, as you know, when you go out there for the show every February, those greens are the smallest greens they play. So if you're not locked in 
you've got you're going to have a problem. And he was as locked in, perhaps, as he's ever been that year at Pebble. Do you think that's the greatest tournament ever produced by a golfer? That he won um, a major by 15 shots? Yeah, you know, for for you know, for what we've seen, you know, can I sit there and tell you, you know, what what Sarazen did back then, or Nelson did when he was running his 11 straight, or anything like that? I I can't, but for what I've been around. Yes, uh, w w without a question, because it was so dominant. It was so good. And he was playing the golf course like it was the Pebble Beach Pro-Am in February, where you see guys get to double digits under par, except you look at the rest of the field, and, you know, Ernie Elts is like 15 shots back, and he's one of the best golfers at that time. So the difference between Tiger and the rest of the field there was probably as pronounced as it's ever been. Do you think that he created Brooks Kepka? Uh, it, 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 it's hard to ask that on Father's Day weekend, Dan. Uh, it, oh, it's so <laughs> <laughs> oh not, not literally, Mike. Not, okay, not, not literally. Wow. Thanks, okay. thanks for the clarification. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, in some ways, yeah. I mean, look, we, we all thought the biggest Tiger impact was going to be minorities coming to the game, more people who didn't look like the rest of the guys who've been playing golf for years playing golf. Instead, the bigger impact, probably, he made golf cool. So Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, all these guys who are six foot plus, you know, with shoulders that fit you know, across the room, it was okay and cool to play golf, it, to be like Tiger, to be one of those guys. And this is now what you're seeing. You're seeing a generation of guys who overpower the game. And, Dan, that's why I think this week's going to be interesting. You can't overpower Pebble Beach no. the way it's set up. And in June, there's a, there's more traditional U.S. Open rough. This is going to look like the U.S. Open we grew up with a little bit more. Uh, so the bomb and gouge guys hit a 320 and wedge it out. We'll have a little tougher time playing that game, I think, as this week plays out. Great stuff there in the Stanley Cup final, Mike. Safe travels and uh, talk to you soon. You too, buddy. Happy Father's Day to you. and you too. All the Danettes, All the Danettes to whom it applies. That's uh, Mike Chirico joining us uh, from Boston. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.